Today, we're 50 days from Photokina. <laughs> Hey everybody, and welcome to After Chat. This is week 18, Monday. Uh, this will be episode 27. All right. Uh, as you can see, I am sitting on the couch today. And it's a, uh, been sick for the last week. I uh, appreciate the uh, messages and emails I got. Uh, I am feeling much better. Thank you. Um, it's Sunday, and Ryan is out shooting a wedding. So I'm going to knock through the Monday news real quick. And hopefully Ryan will be back and we'll start filming as usual again tomorrow. Um, like, so, like I said before, uh, before the credits, before the bump, uh, Photokina is about 50 days out. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Photokina is the every other year, the biannual, biannual, I don't know. Every other year out in Germany, uh, this year it's in Cologne, they have huge expo it's like ces but only for uh for only for photography and it's huge and it's uh well it's it's huge well let me put it that way and basically for the manufacturers it's time for them to show off new equipment for processors it's time for them to show off new things they can do whether it's new prints new sizes new technologies and for photographers it's a time to go and play with the new stuff before it actually hits the shelves a lot of times you can play with the prototypes you can play with the brand new models that maybe your store doesn't have yet uh, it's it's a big time to go out and play and give them feedback that, that's also a big part of this so if you were uh, gonna happen to find yourself in Cologne uh, between the 16th and 21st of September uh, you can buy yourself a one-day ticket uh, if you buy it through the website right now before you, before you get there it's 29 euros or about 29 bucks uh, if you want to buy it day of it'll be 46 euros which is uh, $62 when I check the, the exchanges today um, and then also if you if you happen to show up uh, it'll be 80 euros for a two-day ticket, which that's probably your best way to go, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it runs Tuesday to Sunday, uh, if I remember the dates right. 16th to 21st, I believe, is a Tuesday to a Sunday. So the two-day ticket is typically used for Saturday, Sunday. Those are the two big days. The expo, I mean, the expo is open every day. Those are the two big days that, uh, you know, where the big, the big things happen, the big announcements happen, and you get to play with the cool stuff, and... Uh, and then they call it a season ticket. Maybe that's just the translation. But if you want to go for the entire week, it's 123 euros or 166 bucks at the door, or 78 euros, 105 bucks if you want to buy it in advance. Um, now tying into that, uh, if you look on Amazon right now, the Canon 7D has officially been marked as discontinued. Uh, this wasn't a huge surprise for anybody. This is kind of right in that normal lineup of, hey, we're going to release a new one. So it's the, the, the normal precursor to that. And plenty of leaks saying that the 7D successor, probably the 7D Mark II, will be announced right before Photokina and available to play with there. So if anyone is going, uh, I don't get the chance to go over to Germany and see this this year. Uh, if anyone is going, let me know. Let me know if you can get your hands on a 7D Mark II and if it's any good because I'm expecting great things from it right now. Um, da -da -da -da. So, Lytro. Uh, we haven't taken the time to explain how light field photography works yet. Honestly, it's still kind of a mystery to me. Uh, but I understand it's a lot of math and, and a lot of extra sensors. But... Uh, one thing that has caught the attention of the Lytro fans is the fact that 500 Pix is now going to support the Lightfield files. So what does this mean for Average Joe? That means that there actually will be a hosting service that's ready for you when you use your Ilum or whatever the next version is that comes out. The, you will have an outlet where people can actually work with your files, which up till now has always been questionable. So having the ability to say, okay, I can upload it to 500 pics 
and people can actually work with the files the way that the light field files are intended to be used is a huge step forward for them because they've been looking for that outlet short of having to put their own app out there for people to work with. This, this is huge. This is a, a already established uh, medium for them to be able to put their files to. So, so yeah, look for that because that's going to be pretty, uh, pretty important for them. All right, now for things that I have found on the internet that amuse me. Uh, I don't know if this really qualifies as news or is something that I should have tomorrow to, to do for the More Money Than Brains Club. Uh, there is a thing that is happening, and it is called the selfie stick. I kind of wish Ryan was here so I could throw this at him and he could just go like, what? what? Um, so right now it exists for the GoPro and something else. And basically what it is, is it's, it's a collapsible stick, like a monopod, but it's got a button on the end of it that you could use to trigger your GoPro's picture. So instead of only being able to reach this far with your hand to take your selfie, you can now reach two to three times as far with this telescoping pole and then hit the button and take the selfie and you're not reaching out like this and making that face. So, I... <sighs> if it wasn't ProMaster making this, I would think it was a joke, but they make good equipment. I've got a ProMaster lens, not a uh, lens filter, not, not the lens, the lens on, on the couch shop here is a uh, Sigma 2470 that we rated as the best, the first lens you should buy if you buy an SLR. But I've got a ProMaster UV lens on that, and they make good equipment. So I'm, I'm kind of actually upset that they're actually making this. And the worst part is the GoPro edition is now, right now, when I checked earlier, the 49th most popular photography item on Amazon. That is frightening. But I guess we can't deny the selfie is a thing, and it retails for $32.95. So that is just frightening to me. Again, visiting on the Nikon D810, uh, it has now etched out the two previous best sensors in the digital SLR, which were the 800 and the 800E. So if it didn't, I'd actually be a little more upset. Not that that's huge, huge news, it's just slightly better than the two of them. But, hey, Nikon pushed the envelope just a little bit further. Okay, this one hits a little close to home, and it's news, and it's not happy news. Um, there's a border official who threatened a Boy Scout, an 11-year-old Boy Scout, with 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine because he took a picture. Now, granted, you know, this is a scout troop. They've been out hiking. They're out traveling around, and... Kid was taking pictures, and yes, he did take a picture of a border crossing, which is expressly forbidden. You can't take pictures of border crossings. It's one of the few things you can't take pictures of. But did the border patrol agent need to come over to the scout troop, ignore the scoutmaster, pull a gun on a kid, and, you know, start screaming at him? No, that's totally uncalled for. You're talking about an 11-year-old kid who probably doesn't realize that this is a problem, and he wasn't being malicious in any way, and if you'd asked him to delete it, he probably would have deleted it and said, I'm sorry, you were talking about a pack of Boy Scouts, you know, a pack, a troop of Boy Scouts here, and this just drives me nuts. So, I mean, yeah, the kid did something wrong, but he didn't know he did something wrong, and was the right reaction to pull a gun? No. I don't usually get off on editorial comments. I'm not Bill O'Reilly, but this one, I just think the border patrol guards just have let it go to their head. 
and they think they're better than everyone else and they probably should go take a course in you know I don't know they maybe should get some sensitivity training because pulling a gun on an 11 year old boy scout while the adults with him are trying to find out what he did wrong that's just that kid's gonna be scarred for life I don't, I don't understand why someone would ever do that I don't know so that one hits a little close to home and you know I'm an Eagle Scout I'm a Boy Scout I have spent years with the Scouts and if someone did that to one of my kids I probably would be locked up because I probably would have fought the guy. It's just, that's not how you deal with kids. I'm sorry. I don't mean to get on my high horse here, but that's just, that's just the way it is. It... So I've got one last piece. It's uh, not nearly as uh, depressing as talking about a Border Patrol agent pulling a gun on an 11-year-old, but uh, there are, now these, these are very rumory. Uh, there, there's nothing to back this up whatsoever. It's just uh, during a interview with a couple of the developers at Canon, uh, they were talking about uh, some new lenses, and they were talking about... Um, couple other things and and the uh, and a long time ago there was rumors about Canon putting out a huge megapixel sensor something to compete with the d800 and maybe even blow it out of the water um, something in like the 46 megapixel range I mean now you're getting up into medium format kind of sensors but no one's ever seen it it's always just kind of swept under the rug but they kind of let it out that the new lenses they're working on would be you know, this is just two developers talking. Maybe they're talking out of turn, but talking about how they, the new lenses will be great with the with high resolution images, which Canon's not known for. They're known for great clarity in their pictures, which is why I stick with it. But not for having huge, huge sensors. I mean, that's just not the Canon way right now. And the fact that they were talking about this with with the higher resolution has restirred up the pot of you're going you may see a high resolution Canon Canon camera at some point um, early in the year they did say there would be three big DSLR announcements um, if you accept the fact that the rebel SL1 uh, the, the white rebel SL1 is the first one the 70 mark 2 is the second one that means there's one more that has to come out by the end of the year according to their timeline and it could be this high resolution camera possibly a 2 because we don't have a 2 right now uh, probably not a 1D Mark V or a 1DX Mark II kind of thing so it'll be something to keep your eye out for I know I'll be watching for it and on that note I'm gonna call it a night do some quick edits on this and get this up for you guys in the morning. So by the time you see it, I'll probably have already passed out and gone to bed. See you tomorrow.